Hey everyone, Stacks here. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I'm going to cover Doctor Doom number four. I know it's been out for a while, but it's a lot. This time's allowing me to catch up on some issues where I started covering the series and I wasn't able to keep up due to basically all the X Men titles coming out. I'll leave a link for the playlist here if you need to go back and get caught up on issues one through three. But um, go check that out, and if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. Make sure you leave a like, because it helps draw more views to the channel, and we'll get ready to go, guys. So your writer on this series is Christopher Cantwell, your artist is Salvador La Roca, and color artist Guru FX. So the book starts with this guy sleeping on a park bench, cop checking on him, making sure he hasn't died in the snow, and you know him have, living out of public bathrooms, and you know taking pills, and drinking, and passing out in the middle of... The, the subway down in, in New York. Well, when he's sitting there passed out is when somebody comes by and kicks him in the shin and they ask the question, is he dead? And he's like, no, he's just high. Carry him, drag him, whatever it takes. Get him out of here. Well, the next panel and suddenly he's sitting in this uptown swanky apartment munching on some ramen noodle and somebody is asking him, look, do you even, do you know who you are? And that's when they give him the rundown of his, he's the grandson of some nephew of somebody's baby daddy and Basically, it all comes down to he's the rightful heir to the Ladvarian throne. From there, we jump back to Doom, who is following up on a lead provided to him by Kang that Advanced Idea Mechanics, AIM, is be was behind his assassination attempt. Well, I say attempt, but he actually died, ended up hanging out with Mephisto for a little bit, but then made it back to the realm of the living. So, was it assassination attempt or an actual assassination that he just, you know, got over? I don't know. Anyways... Well, Doom doesn't take any time blasting through the front door of Amy. He makes quick work of the front door guards and grabs this giant freaking weapon that they just apparently have behind the front desk and then takes the elevator up to the next floor. It doesn't take Doom long to lay waste to the next floor and get more information as to where Taskmaster and whoever it is is in charge of him and paying his bill where they're at. So with that, Doom heads upstairs to whatever floor he believes that they are some floor that's being remodeled and he has some kind of strike team that's heading up the stairs after him well when they finally find doom doom uh takes fire takes cover and then unleashes um, just everything on them he opens fire on them he's hitting them with magic he's hitting them with absolutely everything knees fists everything he's everything he's got they're getting it until it gets to the point where doom has laid waste to absolutely this entire strike team and that is when taskmaster shows up now the conversation here with taskmaster is short and sweet doom tells taskmaster like or asks him look who hired aim to have you kill me and of course taskmaster ain't going to give up the information without a fight from there we jump to southern latveria where victoria stands in front of an entire army that is trying to march on to Latveria, and she's not having it. It's here that you find out what this border nation is trying to do, though. They went, they scooped up this dude off the streets, and now they're introducing him as the rightful ruler so that they can justify this pending invasion of Latveria. Well, as old boy sits here and tries to say, look, I want a peaceful transition, she's like, look, we're not transitioning anything. You're some bastard who was shot dead. And he replies, look, Destiny had other plans. She reminds him, look, your Destiny is about to be you dying along here with your entire army. Well, that's when Silver Sable pops up and has to draw down on Victorious. Well, Victorious isn't having it. She blasts her out in the middle of the river and then dives in after and attempts to drown her. The two end up throwing down and kicking up on one side of the river. And that's when they, you know, are close and they can actually just the two of them talk. She says, look, you have no army and I won't let you kill my people. And, and that's when Silver Sable tells her, look, I'm confused myself. We gotta find Doom. Both of us. Back at AIM, Doom isn't doing so well. Taskmaster has, is just telling him, look, dude, give it up and let yourself die. And having already died once during this series, Doom has no intentions of going back. And then Taskmaster thinks he has a solution. He said, look, if you survive a headshot, it means I just have to take the whole head next time. Well, it's at this point that somehow Taskmaster lets his guard down and Doom manages to pull the shield from the wall and crack him right in the chest with it. And when he does, he falls backwards onto this fan and has pieces of metal jam up through his body. And I can't say that it's very well depicted exactly what happened here, 
But all I know is in the end, he fell. He has metal protruding up through him, and he's stuck. He ain't going anywhere, and Doom just looms over him. And as Doom starts to talk to him, he tells him, Your mask is of inferior quality. Who hired AIM to kill me? And Taskmaster tells him, I don't care. And Doom just presses down on these pieces of metal that are sticking out of him, just pushing his arm back down on it. And he says, tell me the code name of your assignment. And Taskmaster keeps it up. He's like, peanut butter. And he pushes again, and Taskmaster screams. Then he says the name, Fruzina. And Doom is, is shocked. His eyes are just wide open, and he can't believe what he just heard, and he whispers it back. From there, Doom goes to the data repository, pulls out a computer, and plugs in and downloads this project that he was just told about by Taskmaster. Once he's finished there, he pours out some gasoline. I guess he found upstairs in the um, construction area. Pours it out in this data repository and then torches the entire place. Well, the fact that AIM is going up in flames draws the attention of Blue Marvel and he rushes there. Back with Doom, he's now on the 75th floor of AIM and opens the door and finds MODOK. And the conversation he's been having with MODOK this whole time is, is really weird. MODOK has him pinned as not a god, but the god. And it's, 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 really, it's a really weird back and forth discussion between the two. It's honestly not that good. But MODOK with this, has this twisted sense of uh, something and tells him, look, a god must choose one over the other. You are, therefore, you must choose. And this woman, do you love her? And Doom says, despite the fact that I've never met her, yes, I do. And once he does, MODOK tries to blast him. He blocks it with the shield, dives at him, and drives his sword right into MODOK. And MODOK's telling him, look, I foresaw this. I allowed this so that you could choose to fight, choose your future, and make this world, make this better world come true. From there, we jump to the person who I guess is really behind all of this, who just so happens to look like Hillary Clinton. But we're finding out that, look, uh, Smick, I can't ever say this country name. Worth going with some carrier. It, it's in economic shambles. It is, their arms sales are falling, their, their food shortages, the energy sector is broken. They, the country is dying. We find out that the United Nations, the EU, the US, Nothing publicly, but they all approve of Dimitri taking over Latveria. And these individuals, to include the, the Prime Minister and the newly wannabe King of Latveria, are all in the room and they know that Sable and Victorious are both searching for Doom. And they say that they'll use wild pack resources to track them. And they make it clear that once we find Doom, we kill him and his cosmic pet. From there, we jump back to AIM, which is just burning down at the moment. You have all the uh, first responders there trying to put out the flame and some rescue people. And we find out that, look, something's gone wrong here. There's more at play that, than Franklin Richards or, or Blue Marvel knew. And the fact that Taskmaster has nearly been crippled, is it says something. And they know that Taskmaster knows something's going on here. And they got to get that information. And up on the moon, I can't tell if this is Reed Richards or if this is Tony Stark in Fantastic Four uniform. But he says, look, things are getting worse up here on the moon and I may need your help. Heck, at this point, I may need advice from Doom himself. All right, so for my review of the book, um, first of all, the good things. The art is good. Salvador La Roca in Guru FX, them coming together. The book looks really, really good. I still think the storyline of the attempted overthrow of Doom is a very interesting storyline to have the whole world, the whole superhero community, everybody to turn on him and to say this is the guy that has to go. I'll th I think that's a really good storyline. And then to capitalize on that with him being on the run, him going to a couple of known uh, allies and them helping him out along the way, it all makes for a really good story. Now, what I don't like so far about this, I still think the, the idea of opening a black hole on the dark side of the moon in order to address global warming 
was a bad idea. I also gotta say, if I'm, if I'm gonna see Doom defeat Taskmaster, it doesn't need to be in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Doom needs to just straight up blow him away with some crazy magic and, and be done with it. There's no reason for him to go hand-to-hand -hand versus, versus Taskmaster. That's dumb. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm tired of seeing Taskmaster used as the Brooklyn Brawler of the, of the Marvel uh, landscape. Anyways, guys, tell me what you thought about the book, and if you can, reach out to your local comic shops. Many of them have Instagram, Facebook, or whatever, and see if there are any back issues available. That's one way that we could reach out, uh, see if they have anything available, and get some new books in our hands, and help them out at the same time. Anyways, guys, that's all I got. Make sure you're subscribed, leave a like, and of course, comment down below, guys. I appreciate you checking out the video. Real Comic Stacks, out.